Hello, I'm Tassiana Coover. And I'm Morgan Klein. And we're here to help you get your tech on. A one-stop shop for the latest apps, devices, and computer software, bringing you the current trends in media and technology. This is Tech On. Today we're going to focus on computer security, spanning the gamut of virus protection and removal to tips on how to keep your confidential files and media safe. So pay attention. Well, listen to this fun fact. We spoke to Carrie Boyer, an information security officer for the ID department of Cal State Fullerton, to tell us more on how to better secure computers and information. Let's take a look, should we? We shall. Norton's a good product, um, uh, McAfee's a good product, Microsoft offers a product, um, so there's an, an, a huge number of vendors out there that will allow you to protect your system. Don't click on email attachments that you don't know um, where they're coming from. Don't download um, software from sites that um, are off the beaten path. Um, if it's free, it's usually going to be an issue. Um, the biggest myth is that, um, that apples are more secure than um, Windows-based systems. They're not. Um, that Apple iPhones are more secure than um, uh, Android phones. They're not. Um, nobody's got a, um, a hedge on the market as far as being the most secure environment. The problem with all these devices is the people using the device. It's us. So we're our own uh, worst enemies. The name of the game is where can I make the most money for the time I'm going to spend trying to get into a computer. So obviously I'm going to pick on technologies that are more widely dispersed. So the myth that Apple's more secure is a myth because um, I'm going to focus my time on the Windows folks. Um, that's where the money is. There's more of them out there than there are Mac users. The pornography websites, uh, the free music download websites, the um, peer-to-peer file sharing websites. Let's say I want to download a, a ringtone. Um, I embed code in my ringtone application that's going to take over control of your, your phone. For instance, I want to, I'm going to grab all your contacts, all your pictures. Once I have those, I can do all sorts of things like send you email and show you pictures that maybe you really don't want people to have and I'm gonna to try to sort money out of you, right? So, because you give me access as a programmer, access to your device, I literally can do anything I want. Once you download the application, I can then take over the device, and that's how it's done. So I go out there and say, oh, I got a great um, application for the Android phone that will automatically tell you where you are at any one time, and, and all this beautiful stuff, and it's free. Well. Sure, and then I'm going to embed my own little stuff in there to grab stuff off your device. So phishing is where I, I send you an email or I call you up on the phone and I get you to give me some information that you normally wouldn't do, like your student account and password or your social security number. I mean, I could say I'm from the um, Orange County Sheriff's Department, I'm detective so and so, and I need to know your driver's license number and your age and your name your mother's maiden name, you might give that to me on the phone. That's phishing. I'm gonna throw out something and hopefully somebody's gonna bite on it. Don't believe anything that you get. I mean, I got an email the other day saying that um, a colleague here at the university had sent um, this company my name to do a survey. Well, I went to the colleague and asked him, did you really do that? I didn't go online and do a survey because you never know what you're gonna get. We're trying to um, expand the help desk for 24-7 student help desk at some point. Um, they'll walk you through how to set up something, how to run a, a, a virus program, how to run a um, malware detection program. They have a whole bunch of tools that are free or the university actually purchases for your use that you may not know about. Expanding on the issue of securing your networking devices, we recommend you focus on having a secure password for each of your various networking accounts. Don't forget to add symbols and numbers to the password and change it every few months or so. So I'm going to do something more than just my name. Yes, Morgan, you should. 
We use technology on a daily basis so commonly that most take it for granted. I know I clearly do, and she probably... Do you do that? Yeah, I She's do. guilty. We enjoy what technology has to offer without exploring where certain innovations come from or what makes them work. Take voice command, for example. Oh, I have a fun fact about voice command. Tell me, because I don't even know how to use it. All right, well, this is perfect then. Did you know Siri owes her existence to Alexander Graham Bell's idea of voice command? I actually didn't. Surprise! It seems futuristic, but people have actually been attempting to get machines to recognize our speech since the 1870s. Around that time, Thomas Edison invented the phonograph, and Alexander Graham Bell and two associates worked on a dictaphone, which is a small cassette recorder used to record speech for transcription at a later time. Now we have this feature almost instantly with voice command. So since the 1870s, it's 2014. Took them a while, but I'm glad they finally figured it out. Right? Very good, Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing what we can do with these small devices nowadays. Our phones have amazing capabilities, but who knew we can use them to monitor our heart rate? This segment, App of the Week, shows you how. The Heart Fitness app helps you to effectively monitor your heart rate by simply just using your iPhone. But how is this even possible? In order for this feature to work, the app uses only the camera and the bright LED on the back of your iPhone. First, use your index finger to cover both the light and the camera. Then the light illuminates your finger so the camera reads the reddish color that results from the LED light on the back of your phone. As blood is pumped into your finger, the hue pulses. The camera reads the pulse and uses it to measure your heart rate. Wow, how cool is that? It actually worked. It's pretty awesome. So I'm going to download this app for after I work out. You should get it too. Gym time after. Gym time. Not only are there always new clever apps coming out, but also new technology in general. For this week, tech video, we have the latest gadgets that will be released this year. Some may be a surprise to you. Let's check it out. Samsung unveiled a new bendable phone prototype, capable of bending to form shapes like a tube. It is paper thin and incorporates an OLED screen. At number 9 we have the Apple iWatch. It will run on the same software as the iPhone and iPad. At number 8 are robots. 2014 is said to be a very big year for companies such as iRobot. At number 7 we have transparent phones. For number 6 we have OLED TVs. These type of TVs can be viewed from any angle and can also allow for a curved screen. And number five, we have the next generation of iPhones. Many rumors have already begun to spread, such as a scratch-resistant surface, 128 gigabytes of space, and that it could be powered by Intel. Number four is the Galaxy X5. Not much is known other than its possible release date of April 4, 2014. At number three is something I'm sure you are all aware of, the Xbox One and the PS4. These two gadgets are tied at equal third place at number two is the Oculus Rift, a virtual gaming reality headset. This is perhaps the coolest technology on the list as it offers the chance to be fully immersed in the virtual world. And finally, at number one is Google Glass. The glasses that offer an augmented reality experience wherever they go. Well, I guess that does it for this episode of Tech On bringing you the latest information about technology and technical services. Also, don't forget to download the app of the week we talked about earlier. For more information about security on your technical devices, you can contact the CSUF IT department. Thank you for joining us. I'm Morgan Klein. And I'm Tatiana Coover. Make sure you tune in next time to get your tech on.